Hello everyone. In this video, we are going through the pituitary gland. So first of all, introduction about the pituitary gland. It is also known as hypophysis. Diameter one centimeter and weight is zero point five to one gram. It lies in the cella turcica at the base of the brain. That is the anatomical part. it is connected to the hypothalamus by pituitary stalk so here it is the hypothalamus and this one it is the pituitary gland and so whatever the thing which is located between the hypothalamus and pituitary gland it is known as pituitary stalk it is divided into two parts this one it is the anterior pituitary it is also known as adenohypophysis and this one it is the posterior pituitary which is also known as neurohypophysis so these are the basics about the pituitary gland now the development of pituitary gland anterior pituitary from the pharyngeal epithelium is a rathcate pouch and posterior pituitary from the neuroectoderm from the base of the hypothalamus so this is how the pituitary gland development takes place now the histology in the pituitary gland there are two types of cells mainly we are considering anterior pituitary gland chromophob cells which doesn't have any granules and second it is the chromophil cells these are the large number of granular cells and different types of chromophil cells first one corticotrophs 15 to 20 percentage of the total number of cells and uh, these cells secrete adrenocorticotropic hormone gonadotropes 10 to 15 percentage and these cells secrete luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone thyrotropes these are 3 to 5 percentage and this secretes thyroid stimulating hormone lactotropes 10 to 15 percentage and this secrete prolactin somatotropes 40 to 50 percentage and this secret growth hormone so these all are the different types of cells which are present in the anterior pituitary gland and this all cells are known as chromophil cells so here the main role it is of the hypothalamus it synthesizes and releases different type of hypophysiotropic hormones so first thyrotropin releasing hormone that is the trh corticotropic releasing hormone crh gonadotropin releasing hormone gnrh growth hormone releasing hormone ghrh growth hormone inhibitory hormone ghih prolactin releasing hormone prf and prolactin inhibitory hormone pih so all different types of hormones which are released from the hypothalamus now regulation of secretion so it is regulated by the hypothalamo hypophysial portal system so it's a one type of system which is present between the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland that is known as hypothalamo hypophysial portal system hypothalamus controls anterior pituitary gland hormones by releasing an inhibitory hormones which are secreted by the specific hypothalamic nuclei so here what is happening specific hypothalamic nuclei secrete some releasing an inhibitory hormone and via the hypothalamo hypophysial portal system this releasing an inhibitory hormone reaches to the anterior pituitary gland it carries hypothalamic hormones specifically to the anterior pituitary without dilution in the systemic blood so there is one close system is working between the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary that is the hypothalamo hypophysial portal system here whatever the releasing an inhibitory hormone release from the hypothalamus must go to the anterior pituitary gland these are not dilute in the blood but they are not secreted into the blood all right so that is the hypothalamo hypophysial portal system 
now anti-repituitary hormones which are different anti-repituitary hormones thyrotropin or thyroid stimulating hormone growth hormone adrenocorticotropic hormone follicle stimulating hormone luteinizing hormone prolactin so these all are the anti-repituitary hormones now here this picture shows different type of releasing and inhibitory hormone which are synthesized from the hypothalamus and these are going to the anterior pituitary and these hormones of the releasing and inhibitory type regulates the secretion and synthesis of different type of anterior pituitary gland hormones so this is the prh that means prolactin releasing hormone stimulates the secretion of prolactin and PIH prolactin inhibitory hormone and dopamine both inhibit the secretion of prolactin thyrotropin releasing hormone stimulates the secretion of thyroid stimulating hormone corticotropin releasing hormone for the adrenocorticotropic hormone growth hormone releasing hormone stimulates the secretion and release of growth hormone and growth hormone inhibitory hormone inhibit the secretion of growth hormone gonadotropin releasing hormone this stimulates the release of fsh and lh follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone from the anterior pituitary gland so all these are the hormones of the anterior pituitary gland and these all are the releasing and inhibitory hormones from the hypothalamus these hormones only coming to the anterior pituitary gland without dilution into the blood that is the important point and later all these anterior pituitary gland hormones regulating the major glands as well as major tissues of our body now the posterior pituitary hormones the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland is derived from neural tissue the nerve cell bodies are located in the hypothalamic nuclei so posterior pituitary hormones are synthesized in the nerve cell bodies packaged in the secretory granules and transported down the axons of the posterior pituitary for the release into the circulation so posterior pituitary doesn't have any cells but these are the neurons from the hypothalamus and these axons are present in the posterior pituitary they secrete the adh antidiuretic hormone or vasopressin and second one oxytocin now what is hypopituitarism the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland has a partial or complete loss of functioning of the lobe the symptoms depend on the type of the hormone which are no longer being produced by the gland because the pituitary gland affects the other endocrine organs effects of hypopituitarism may be gradual or sudden and dramatic so that is the hypopituitarism what would you feel if you were hypopituitary depends on the type of hormones involved signs and symptoms with low hormone levels are usually very vague so there are different signs and symptoms will be present and the taste to find out which hormones are not being produced so for example low cortisol level can cause the weight loss diarrhea loose bowels loose blood pressure and blackout and undue tiredness so when the cortisol levels are low these are the symptoms when the growth hormone is low it will cause the failure of growth and undue tiredness and weakness in the adults when there is a low sex hormone level it will cause the impotence regular or absent menstrual periods lethargy and sweats may be a feature when the thyroid hormones is low it will cause the dry skin and due tiredness when the adh is lake or low or absent then it causes severe thirst and copious amount of urine hypopituitarism may be either primary or secondary so first primary hypopituitarism it directly affect in the pituitary gland causes pituitary tumors or adenoma inadequate blood supply to the pituitary gland infections and or inflammatory disease radiation therapy surgical removal of the pituitary tissues and autoimmune disease so all these are the causes of 
primary hypopituitarism now secondary hypopituitarism which are the causes affect the hypothalamus in the primary specifically the pituitary gland is affected but in the secondary hypopituitarism the hypothalamus is affected tumors of the hypothalamus inflammatory disease head injury so hypopituitarism either may be primary or secondary now which are the test hormonal levels this includes the different type of blood tests complete pituitary function test this test measure the pituitary hormones before and after stimulation to find out which are working normally and which are not so first in the complete pituitary function test they will take your blood samples later they will give you something which causes stimulation of the pituitary gland and after stimulation they are again taking the blood samples and after that both the blood samples are compared so in the anterior pituitary dysfunction hypopituitarism affect the thyroid adrenal and gonadal dysfunction or the function becomes reduced and uh, hyperpituitarism commonly results in altered acth or gh secretion leading to cushing syndrome or acromegaly so in this there are different conditions of hypopituitarism as well as the conditions are also there of the hyperpituitarism adh hormone involvement water deprivation test will be done mri or ct scan of the pituitary and surrounding tissue should be performed to assess the local site damage now the check for the vision the optic now which relays images from your eyes to your brain passes very close to the pituitary gland so tumors of the pituitary gland can expand causing the pressure on its now and this will cause impaired vision initially involving the periphery part of the vision so we must have to perform the vision test also to find out whether the vision has been lost or not because the optic now passing near to the pituitary gland so any type of pituitary damage or deformity or abnormality will affect the optic now and hence it is going to affect the vision so diagnosis computer tomography ct or cat scan should be performed mri magnetic resonance imaging blood test to measure hormonal levels this includes the gh cortisol and glucose now the treatment part treatment may include replacement hormone therapy surgical tumor removal usually transphenoidal approach should be performed a transphenoidal hypophysectomy removes the tumor through the cut in the nasal passage so the tumor removal of the pituitary gland the nasal passage should be cut and uh, the approach should be transphenoidal hypophysectomy should be performed a craniotomy removes the tumor to the cut in front of the skull bone so transphenoidal hypophysectomy or craniotomy should be performed radiation therapy using high dose x ray to kill the tumor cells these are the different treatment options and uh, we also give the long term drug therapy for example corticosteroid drugs thyroid hormone and sex hormones to the patients of the hypopituitarism if you like this presentation please try to share it with your friends batch groups and colleagues thank you